now the topic before us is unmasking the motives why websites get hacked in today's world internet has changed our life in many respects while sitting at home we can make online purchases we can sell our services and products while sitting at home we can avail banking services we can buy insurance products we can get knowledge on different fields pro internet by visiting various sites so websites have changed our way of thinking we can prosper if we have a website in the name of our firm because the people around the world will get to know about our services and products and we can sell our services and products all over the world but here lies a problem on one side we can get a lot of benefits by developing our own website but at the same time there are hackers or cyber criminals they attack our websites or they hack our websites why do they do so this is the main topic now this is before you the data of cyber crime and the data pertains to internet crime complaint center which is run by fbi you can see that the number of complaints and losses over the last 5 years is in, has increased at a very fast speed because the cyber crime results into very good financial benefits financial they get very they uh, cyber criminals find it very remunerative or financially attractive to launch cyber attacks these are certain motives which may be there behind the website attacks these are financial gain data misuse ransomware personal revenge fun or recognition practice is pioneers or if we call it cyber espionage it is more proper disrupting business and hacktivism we will discuss each of these reasons behind the websites attacks one by one thanks for now our topic is the first line of defense implementing strong passwords for website security it often happens that every year the accounts of millions of people get hacked the main reason is that the individuals choose to have a very simple passwords such as a b c d 1 2 3 4 these like so passwords are often we use these simple passwords are very easy for the hackers to crack so here we will discuss some tips so that we can have strong passwords which are not easy for the hackers to crack first is length of the password length of the password should be more than 8 that is we can keep it as a b c d at the rate 1 2 3 4 that is total length i am not suggesting that these types of passwords should be maintained we will discuss it in more in detail that is the length of the password should be at least 8 characters long more the characters it will be good but if we keep very big password the characters are very lengthy it may be easy, not be easy for us to remember then we can make it complex how we can make it complex we can keep it complex by writing it in upper words upper characters 
we can also use simple uh, normal characters then we can use special symbols these types of symbols and then we are to also use numericals so in this way we can make the password strong here this is the upper case this is the lower case these are the special characters and these are the numericals we can write it properly i am only here giving example then we are to maintain uniqueness what it means uniqueness means suppose we are having bank account with three banks a bank b bank and c bank it may be possible that in all cases we are having this password in all these cases we are using the same password for the purpose of simplicity so that we need not to remember the password in each and every case but it should not be same, the same the passwords sometimes we think that here one two three four here we keep it two three four five here we keep it three four six five and after some time we keep it change it in this way it should not also happen you must remember that that in the history there was one of the cyber attacks in which the cyber attackers used our history of the passwords which we had used in the past and by collecting the passwords which we had used on the various websites in the past they launched the cyber attack and that hackers were in a position to get the access to about 20 million accounts in this way so we should keep the different passwords for each and every account online account either it is bank account or insurance account or any other e-commerce sites such as amazon flipkart or any other we should have separate passwords for each of these accounts for then we should change the passwords after every 2 3 months but we should not repeat the same passwords then we should use multi factor authentication mfa or 2 fa two factor authentication what is this in this case it one is the your password which you are having in the uh, upper case lower case numerical and special character this is the normal password and after that when you enter your password some sort of code comes to your mobile and you have to enter that and only after entering that otp you can get access to the, your website so we should enable multi factor authentication or two factor authentication in some cases there is some sort of finger recognition or such like security measures are there which we can implement then it often ha happens that when we are choosing the passwords for our website or any other online account we to keep the password simple and rememberable we use the passwords of our wife our son or any other person which we like we may also use the date of birth of our son or wife or any other person so we should not or anniversary date we sh should not use the names of our relatives or our close friends or any of our dates such as wedding date birth date as passwords because normally we put or we receive birthday wishes or anniversary wishes and the cyber criminals are always active to collect the personal information of the persons and in this way they can easily guess the passwords of ours so we should not use our names and date of birth as passwords then we should not 
keep our passwords in unsecured location. What it means? It means that normally we may be writing our password on our desktop in some file. It may be possible that if the hacker gets unauthorized access to our account, he may also get the passwords of our all other online account. So we should not keep our passwords in any of the files in our desktop or laptop. It may also happen that we write it, it on notepad and keep the said notepad beside our laptop or desktop. And it may also happen that if we are not present at the time when the notebook is lying there or we have forgot to pick up the notepad, the other person may have access to all our passwords. So whenever we use the passwords, we should keep the notepad in a very secure location. It may be also possible that we find it difficult to generate the password so we can take the help of an online site strongpasswordgenerator.org. You can take the help of that and we can also take the help of password manager. Password manager is just like a bank wallet where you keep your valuable items. The password manager helps you in generating and storing the passwords and you can assess the password whenever you require it. So strong password is the first line of defense in the case of website security. So we should keep in mind the length, uniqueness and complexity of the passwords and how to generate the passwords. And in this way, we can take a step towards making our website secure. Now the topic before us is shielding your website with a CDN enhanced security and performance. Firstly, what is the meaning of CDN? CDN means content delivery network. Content delivery network is a network of servers which are spread across the globe. When a person visits a site with some request, the CDN forwards that request to the nearest server. Suppose this is the user, then he will be provided services by this server which is closest to his office or residence. In this way, the website speed is increased. But normally we think that content delivery network is associated with speed of website. That is, it provides good speed, content delivery network. It increases the speed of web -like website loading. But content delivery network also has its role in website security. When these are the post servers uh, located at different places, suppose a website is attacked with DDoS attack. Large number of requests in millions or billions are coming to the website. Then what happens? This content delivery network as already told has a large number of servers. So all this traffic is handled by these different types of these different servers which are located at different places. 
सो वेन एवर देर इज ए डी डी ओ एस अटैक डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड डिनाइल ऑफ सर्विस अटैक बाय सम हैकर देन द इंटायर ट्रैफिक इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड बिटवीन द डिफरेंट सर्वर एंड इन दिस वे द फॉल आउट ऑफ दिस डी डी ओस अटैक इज मेट विथ दैट इज द इम्पैक्ट दैट इज द डैमेज विच वॉज टू बी कास्ट बाय द डी डी ओस अटैक कैन बी डेल्ट विद बाय कंटेंट डिलीवरी नेटवर्क कंटेंट डिलीवरी नेटवर्क ऑल्सो रिड्यूसिज द अटैक सर्फेस एरिया ऑफ द हैकर कंटेंट डिलीवरी नेटवर्क मे ऑल्सो बी प्रोवाइडिंग सम सिक्योरिटी फीचर्स एडिशनल सिक्योरिटी फीचर लाइक फायर वॉल्स एंड आई डी एस इंट्रूजन डिटेक्शन सिस्टम देन द क्वेश्चन राइसिस वेदर वी शुड गेट ए सी डी एन the answer is that it depends on our needs whether we require the facility of cdn or not we should get cdn if we have global audience and we want good speed of our website then if we experience high traffic volumes traffic is high then we should also go in for cdn then if content on our website is very heavy very big that is there are large number of images or videos on our website then we should opt for cdn further if we want some additional security features then we should go in for cdn the cdn alone cannot provide comprehensive security it is only one of the steps which we can take to protect our website then we should not opt for cdn contact delivery network if we have only a small audience or we have some only local audience we need not if we have low traffic volume or the number of users are very less traffic is very less at a particular time and further speed is not an issue in case of our website even if our website is working slow we are having the facility of only one or two servers it will serve the purpose we are not very much concerned about the that the user request is a process at a very higher speed we are not concerned with that speed is not the critical factor of our website while cdn can offer many benefits like reducing the attack surface area or meeting getting ddos attacks but it should not be considered that it is a full proof system it is only one of the security steps which we can take to protect our website from hackers we must take cdn only as one of the steps which we can take to protect our website from unauthorized access or to protect the user data from hackers thanks for watching if you like our course please spare some time to give a star rating to our course